Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So we're just going to discuss week four just completed back to work. So I've done one full month. Now, granted, the first two weeks were three-hour shifts a day. The second two weeks were four-hour shifts a day. Um, starting next week, I go to five hours a day, and then the week after that, six, and then seven, and then eight. So over a period of two months, I'm going to gradually progress back into work. So... Had I had my way, I would have come back to work and gone straight back to eight hours a day. And that would have been an unadulterated failure. A complete not. If, if I had done what I wanted to do, um, I'd be back in a leave of absence by now. Or something else. <laughs> in a hospital. Um, but I listened to my physiotherapist, Nancy. I listened to my therapist, Michaela. And then my girlfriend and other people that I trust. And they went, <laughs> no, no, you're an idiot. So I listened to them. And for all the people that were concerned about me and told me that going back full-time right off the hop would be foolish, you were right. Yeah, I said it. You were right. So let's just talk about the last week. So first couple days, if memory serves, um, I still had some assistance. I still had some training wheels on, so to speak. Um, I still had a very... The, the same individual had been helping me. And then we took the training wheels off. I'm doing my job on my own without any immediate assistance. Um, being treated like any other employee now. Uh, so if I need help, I seek the normal assistance. I don't have someone like right beside me watching you do my job, make sure I'm doing it right, make sure I haven't missed anything, things like that. That was a bit of a challenge, right? Um, I knew that, I knew, again, I knew that moment would come eventually. Because um, I knew if that moment wasn't going to come, then me coming back to work was not going to be a thing. So I was a bit concerned that would I ever get there. Um, now, now that I'm doing my job on my own, now there are other factors in play, right? So I work for a major telecommunications company as a technical support representative, um, which means I have to talk to people on the phone, which means there will be times where my aphasia or my anomia or my apraxia will present. It's happened a couple times. I've, I've, I've noticed it. Um, the events have either been so discreet or so subtle that no one's picked up on it. I, I, I notice it. I, I can tell. Customers can't. My coworkers, by far and large, probably can't. Um, still coming to grips with the whole I have knowledge without context or there's things I can't remember. Those events are fewer and fewer. Um, I still have knowledge without context, but I'm just trusting my gut. Y you apparently know what you're doing, so just trust your gut. Um, had a few stumbles here and there. I'm still fairly tired when I get done work. So for those of you that have had a stroke and you're starting to go back to work, please, I implore you, one, don't try to right off the hop, go back full time, because that will just be a mess. Also, when you do your modified shifts, it's, like, it's four hours. Like, like, let's be realistic. It's four hours. You know, six when you include travel time to from work. I get home and I'm physically exhausted, just spent. So in that event, I'm now going to bed, right? Like I'm, I've am i just been home shortly. I did a bit of grocery shopping on the way home. And I'm going to be, shortly after this, I'm going to go take a nap and then I'm going to do a couple more videos. Um, so I get home from work and I will take off the clothes I wore to work and I'll put on pajamas or track pants and a t-shirt and I'll either curl up in bed or push back my lazy boy and just take a nap. Um, the good thing is it's not the same type of fatigue nap as it would have been, say, three months ago. It's still a nap based on fatigue. Yeah, that's a thing, but it's not the same same type. Right? It's not the same nature and quality of the nap, so that, that's a good thing. 
Um, not having the same emotional fragility and, and fluctuation as I had. Um, I did have speak with a customer today. It was a bit of an emotionally charged call due to the nature of the situation, the reason why she was calling in. Um, I'm surprised I didn't just start crying, but, but I didn't. Uh, I took a call a couple days ago where a customer had called into a point no noise on their home phone. Problem is they were calling from their home phone, so I could hear the noise, and that just drove my, my brain just went nuts. So I did, you know, step away from my desk, take some medication, just work through it. Again, I know there are situations or circumstances where it's probably better I go home. I know that. I also know I'm not going home. But the only way I can prove to me and the people around me that I'm good to do my job is by coming to work every day doing my job, right? Regardless of how wretched the headache is, regardless of how much anxiety I have, I still have a lot of anxiety about going to work. I, I still have, when I get with like two kilometers away from work, I can feel the wall. I'm, there, there, is, there is this psychic wall around my workplace. And I know when I'm going there, about two kilometers out, I can feel it. It just, it's palpable. It just feels like I'm, I'm passing through a wall. But that will hopefully dissipate in time. Hoping. Still trying to get used to being in the building at times. It's still a bit difficult. Um, I'm still journaling. Michaela, my counselor, um, amazing lady. Um, I cannot praise or thank her enough. Um, she gave me some exercise to do when things are getting a bit spotty. Like, it's sort of a method to journal. So I've been trying to follow that when things happen. You know, it's, it's not easy. Um, I, I'm still aware there are times where I don't move the same way through the building um, or a room. Um, and I'm hoping in time that'll get better, right? I, I appreciate it may not. And that could be directly related to the building. Like uh, that's the building where I almost died. So I have the added advantage every day of going to work. When I go to work, that's where I had my stroke. That's a hard nut to crack, you know, like I'm, I'm just trying to let it go as best possible. I'm hoping one day it'll just click. Mikhail and I will work through that because that, that's for me it's a it's a huge thing um, performing almost to the exact same level I was before my stroke at least that's what the statistics say and the, the tool we use to generate statistics about how well you do your job that's saying I'm pretty much on par as the day I left um, minus the stroke of course that that didn't happen um, I'm still not, what's what I'm looking for? Still not comfortable at times. The ambient noise is still overwhelming. I mean, deafening. Um, I'm still second guessing myself sometimes. Uh, and again, it's, it's, it's the second guessing myself over my own ability. Right. Um, my coworkers, by far and large, I've had a couple ask me for help now and again. Um, I believe the advice I've been given was the right advice because they didn't come back to me and say, no, that was wrong. Um, I, I'm, I'm just very aware, right? And the returning to work from a stroke is a huge, huge transition. Right? And I'm still coming to grips with it. Um, it, it's going to be difficult. Starting next week, it, it's it's going to be a new experience because now I'm in the building for five hours. And then the week after, that'll be six. And the week after, that'll be seven. The week after, that'll be eight. So what I've done is I'm going to be back full-time by the end of February. So what I've done is tentatively, I've planned a soiree, a get-together, a, a cotillion, where we will drink alcohol libations and food um, at a local pub. Um, just just to get together with friends and coworkers and whatnot, just to celebrate the fact that I'm back to work and I'm back to work full time and things are going well, right? Because I figure 
you got to celebrate your successes, right? You got to make sure that you are taking the time to celebrate the things that are going excellent because you've had times where things have just gone complete and utter shitty, right? And that's just something you got to do. You got to take the time to celebrate your successes, to take the time to, to validate the fact that what you are doing is the right thing to do and, you know, that you've accomplished something, right? Um, I know I'd wanted to return to work like two months after my stroke. And I know that would have been, I know now that would have been completely the wrong decision to make. Um, because two, like two months after my stroke, I was in no condition physically. I was in no condition mentally. I was in no condition emotionally. I was in no, I was in no position in any way, ready, equipped, or able to come back to work. And I, I appreciate that for those of you that have had a stroke and you want to go back to work because you want to prove that you have use, you've got value, you're able to contribute. I, and trust me, I, I was there and in some cases I'm still there. You've got to do it when you're truly ready. I realize it's a want to thing. I want to do this. I'm going to go and do this. Yeah. I challenge you. Try to return to work from your stroke when you're not actually ready and you will fall on your face. Because I know, had I done what I wanted to do, or what I planned on doing, or what I thought on doing, was returning to work after my stroke. Way too soon. It would have been. It would have been an absolute nightmare. Just would have been the wrong thing to do. Would have been completely a bad decision. So ultimately, work isn't going too bad. Um, my employer is still pretty decent about you know me needing help from time to time or a little bit of accommodation here and there. Um, my, my fellow employees, by far and large, they're pretty decent about it. Um, some still keep their distance. I'm assuming because I don't know what to say. Right? I, I'm assuming. I really don't know. Um, but I'm not going to go up to challenge, hey, why don't you talk to me? Right? Uh, if they're going to come around, they're going to come around, and if they're not, they're not. That's okay, whatever. I'm not, I'm not tra chasing people to come talk to me. Um, I think maybe having a conversation with a coworker today about that, um, it could be some people, they're afraid they're going to break me more. I, I don't know. It's just, it's just a thing, right? So be it. Um, still don't remember some people's names. Like someone said, hey, how's it going today? And they used my name and I'm like, good? I don't know your name. I didn't say anything about it. I'm going to assume it's because I haven't been in the building in six months. Right? Um, I'm just going to make that assumption. I'm not going to try to throw it on the stroke. Um, could be a little bit of that, maybe, but I'm just going to throw it on the fact that I haven't been in the building in six months. I haven't seen your face in six months. I haven't interacted with you in six months. I don't know who you are. Like, I know who you are, but I don't know what to call you. So I'm just going to go, yeah, okay, good. And I'll just fake it till I have to know your name. And then I'm like, I don't know who you are. So, ultimately, returning back to work is, is, a, is a big deal. Ultimately, returning back to work is fraught with stumbles and hurdles of all, all natures and sizes. Um, ultimately, returning back to work is scary. Right? Um, I've been there a month. There's been a couple of days that have been really difficult. Mainly in the first week or two. The only difficult days I've had this week is when I'm done work. I get home and I'm just obliterated I'm exhausted I'm done like I'm gonna go right now for probably a two-hour nap um, and then I'll get up and start my day um, you know it's a shitty thing it really is right because how much napping do you really do as an adult except for maybe on you know, like a bad weather weekend where you're on the couch attempting to watch a movie and you drift off um, yeah so in closing, for those of you that are planning on returning back to work, right, just be realistic. Right? Just be in the moment about 
what your needs are going to be and don't try to push it right this is a case where you need to embrace your inner tortoise right because you can want to try to finish the race quickly and it, it'll just you'll fall on your face right i know i can feel that extra hour still i'm i'm acclimatized to it so to speak but when that extra hour kicks in i, I can feel that fourth hour uh hopefully next week i can work through the fourth hour and then it's the fifth hour i feel next week will be a bit more interesting so ultimately this has been a rewarding process it has not had its stumbles it has not been completely easy every day but i'm getting to find my own pace back i'm getting to find where i'm at back again i'm getting to find where the holes are right because this is where i'm going to learn how to get better at my job is where the holes are so on that note if you happen to have been liking what you've been watching over the last little over seven months please like share subscribe share with your friends um, if you know someone that's actually going through their post-stroke journey or is assisting someone through their post-stroke journey point the channel out to them they might get some benefit out of this and if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke which are generally accepted to be Someone appears to be befuddled or confused. Someone's having vision problems. Uh, someone that uh, has facial droop. They can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. They can't smile equally effectively or at all. They're having slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate, excuse me, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. They uh, can't stand unaided. They can't handle their own body weight. Please immediately place them in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.